as of this video, you can go to the store and buy the new M2 MacBook Air. And after thinking about it every single day since Apple made the announcement, I'm leaning towards not buying the M2 MacBook Air. And I'm gonna use this video to explain the three reasons why I made that choice. Now, with that said, yo, if you see me next week with the new MacBook Air, mind your business, I changed my mind. Reason number one, there has been a bunch of issues with the MacBook Pro that has me looking at the M2 Air kind of like, are you going to be the same? Now, over the last two years, Apple has equipped the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air with the exact same chip. They have the same chip usually. Depending on your, your configuration, sometimes the MacBook Pro will have slightly more power, but for the most part, they're relatively the same chips. This time around, that is the exact same with the M2 chips. They're both essentially the same. And that means that some of the problems that you're going to get with the MacBook Pro will probably be even worse on the MacBook Air M2. And let me explain. So first, the MacBook Pro has a major issue with its storage. If you get the base model MacBook Pro with 256 gigs, the M2 chip is only equipped with one NAND flash configuration. So people have been doing like a bunch of tests and what they found was that the M2 chip is actually 50% slower than the M1 chip when it comes to read and write speed. Now that's actually a major problem for me. And that's because personally, as somebody that edits videos and photos, I'm transferring thousands of files over simultaneously at the same time and I will definitely feel that 50% slowness in speed if it's really that bad. And that means that I'm gonna really feel the reduction in the lower speed. That means that you need to buy more storage, which I probably already will. And at that point, if I'm looking at the one terabyte model, I might as well get the M1 Pro, which I already have. Now, the second issue that I've been hearing about with the M2 Air is that the fan or lack thereof is really causing some slowdowns and throttling. So the M2 Air does not have a fan. That's something that's common on the last two Airs. They took away the fan. And for whatever reason, in the M1 Air, the fan being missing did not cause major issues. I can use my sustained workflow and be okay. But this time around, apparently, maybe it's because it is indeed a faster chip. Not having a fan is affecting the computer. The M2 Air is a little bit slower and it throttles because the lack of the fan, which you could get in the MacBook Pro. Thinking about my use, I usually push the M1 Pro to its limit, bunch of tabs open and running Final Cut, running Lightroom at the exact same time. So I will probably notice this issue, especially because it doesn't have a fan. My glasses is causing too much glare. Let me take it off. All right, so reason number two why I'm leaning towards not getting the M2 Pro is because of the ports situation on the M2 Air. The 14 inch MacBook Pro is the best computer I've ever owned. It's powerful, has a beautiful design that has really grown on me. And best of all, it has ports. It has exactly what I need to do my professional work on the go without needing a useless dongle. Can you say the same about the M2 Air? Unfortunately not. The M2 Air only has two USB-C ports, a headphone jack and a MagSafe port. And while I'm a big fan of them bringing the MagSafe port to this device because it frees up a USB-C port when charging, it's still not enough. It's missing the main thing for me, which based on my workflow, I'm gonna need an SD card and you're not gonna get that slot on the M2 Air. And worst of all, the two USB-C ports that Apple has placed on the M2 Air are both on the same side. Why does Apple think that it makes any design sense to put them both on one side. It makes it so much harder to use the computer. And I feel like honestly, that's a big change that Apple really needs to do on their lower price models. Speaking of the M1 Air, that is my third reason for not really needing to upgrade to the M2 Air. The MacBook Air M1 is still being sold by Apple and I still have one kicking around. This MacBook was good enough for me to make a lot of videos over the last year and really could handle its own, especially when editing like 4K videos and whatnot. It basically has the exact same benefit of the M2 Air besides the redesign and besides having MagSafe and of course the weak M2 chip is not really major deal breakers that will make me or anyone else upgrade from the M1 Air to the M1 Pro. I do want to spend a second talking about some good things because based on the video it makes it seem like it's all doom and gloom. I am still on the fence like 90% on the side that's saying don't buy it 
but I still kind of want to buy it just because I want to test it out and see what it's like. I always loved the air form factor and I wish that they added like a few more things to that form factor and made it small and just powerful and that would be the computer that I choose. I just need some more ports, guys. Like, like, come on, just give me some more ports. And the thing about this computer is you're probably not going to buy this computer for high intensive professional work. I'm sure it can handle tasks. Really, this is a good computer for like college students, people that are not doing any intensive things like coding or editing photos. And this is probably an amazing computer for that. But again, the price. The M1 Air exists and it's a really good computer. So yeah, that's my conflict. What do you think? Am I completely wrong or being very dramatic about the issues with the M2 Air? Or does this make complete sense? You're on the same side as me. Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe if you like my content. I will see you in the next one. Peace.